Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of Zira Tutorial Basics. With these videos, we are trying to create more awareness among the Zira enthusiasts. We hope that the previous episodes have been productive for you so far. In the last video, we covered Jira workflow. Now, let's look at how we can make use of the reporting features provided by Jira. Out of several reports that Jira provides, we will be specifically focusing on the burn down chart, sprint report, and velocity chart for this episode. So let's get started with the burn down chart first. A burn down chart is a graphical representation of work left to do versus time. Where work left to do is measured in terms of effort remaining and time in terms of number of days in a given sprint. Effort would be based on the estimation technique you follow. Zira usually supports story points or time-based estimates. Effort here is represented by story points across the tickets. This chart helps you and your team identify how quickly you are burning user stories in that particular sprint. In Jira, a ticket or user story burns after it reaches the final column in the workflow, which is usually the down column. Now let's look at how we can understand the status of your sprint with the help of different graphs. This graph here represents the ideal case. The gray line is the guideline for your sprint burndown over the sprint period, whereas the red line is the actual burndown of your sprint tasks. As you see here, the efforts have been consistently burned throughout the sprint. Also, all of the committed tasks have been completed on time, that is the last day of the sprint. Now, this graph over here shows that your team was unable to complete all of the tasks on time. This indicates that your team is probably overcommitting or taking in more tasks than their capacity. This could result in your teams being burned out. Okay, uh, now let's also look at a case of undercommitment. As you see here, your team has completed all of the tasks before the sprint end time. This indicates that your team could have added more tasks to the sprint. This is where Team Velocity helps to plan for optimum tasks for a given sprint and measure productivity. We will talk about that in a bit. Let's take a look at this chart. This chart represents a scope creep or scope change. The spikes you see in the red line means that new tasks were added once the sprint was in progress. As you see here, tasks have been added to the sprint after it has been started. Therefore, the total story point has been increased as compared to the initially committed velocity. Okay, um, we have mentioned velocity quite a bit in this episode. Um, so let's understand what a velocity chart is. A velocity chart helps to compare between the planned velocity and the actual velocity achieved for a given sprint. A team's velocity is the total task forecasted to be completed for a certain sprint. So if you see in the chart, the gray bar represents the total number of committed stories before the start of the sprint, and the green bar represents the total number of stories that were burned or completed. The overall use of the velocity chart is for the team to plan for the future sprints and decide how much work to commit to. There are various ways to calculate the team velocity. A common method that most scrum teams use is calculating the average of completed tasks in all sprints to come up with their team velocity. However, so other scrum teams may also prefer to interpret sprint velocity by calculating the median value. Now, let's look at the sprint report. This report is widely used by the development team to retrospect on their performance for a particular sprint. It gives the picture to the team about what tasks they could complete and what they were not able to complete in a given sprint. Also, it shows how the burndown chart looks like, how many stories, or tasks they were able to burn and what remained. Sprint report also helps a team to double check on the total tasks committed versus completed and adjust for future sprints. All right, I hope that learning about these specific Jira reports was helpful to you. Please don't forget to ask questions or give feedback in the comment section below. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.